Hey guys, hi. How you doing? I just finished lunch. I had some ground turkey that I sauteed up and also had some broccoli that I sauteed up with some onions. And I'm still a little peckish, I'm still a little hungry. It was not quite enough. I think that if I had added a carb to it, some rice, that that would have completed that meal for me. So I'm just thinking to myself now, after I make this video for you, I'm gonna do that. But, um, so I am about to go back to work and I'm gonna work to watching the, uh, the show on HBO called All That I See in the Dark or All Alone in the Dark. Hi guys, if you're here and you're, and you're, hey May, Miley, hey Shannon, if you guys are here, please say hi, love when uh, we get to hang in real life. Um, so anyway, I'm about to watch the show All Alone in the, in the Dark, which is about um, the Golden State serial killer, and I have to watch it in the daytime, but because <laughs> I can't watch it at night because it's too scary, but it got me to think about the topic that I've been wanting to record for you guys, which is nighttime eating, overeating at night. So I figured before I turn on that show and get back to work, um, I am going to chat with you guys about this. So a few of you have requested this video. I get it. This was something that I struggled with the most. It's very common with overeating, emotional eating, binge eating, for it to happen in the evening or later on in the day. I'm gonna make a distinction here. There is a difference between overeating in the evening, like after dinner and just kind of going into the kitchen and going in again and then again and having it turn into a binge. But, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. There is also the condition called nighttime eating in which somebody would wake up in the middle of the night pretty much three times or more a week to eat and they cannot go back to sleep until they do. I used to have a client t 10 years ago who told me about this issue where she had to get up and she had to eat a huge bowl of cereal in the middle of the night, otherwise she would be insomniac, awake the rest of the entire night. So we had to work to figure out how to unlearn that habit for her. I'm gonna talk about that middle of the night eating in another video because it deserves its own its own moment. Um, yes, Smiley, I'm gonna be posting this later. It will be saved to our Facebook group for sure. Yep, it'll be there. So um, I wanted to talk about, you have the nighttime eating issue. Is that the one where you wake up in the middle of the night to, um, to eat and can't go back to sleep? Oh, I have so many mosquito bites. It's, <laughs> I keep itching. So um, while you get me that answer, I'm gonna start talking what I will from now on call overeating at night. And I'm calling it that on purpose because not everyone feels that they are binge eating and that's not necessarily what you're doing. Binge eating really um, defines it if you're doing it more than, I believe, two to three times a week and it's happening regularly and it feels like this overwhelming kind of like um, urge, not like an urge, an urge, where you almost turn into this other person and you go on this autopilot and you cannot stop from eating. Even if it's something that you are telling yourself, like, I really don't wanna do this. It's just like this primal driving urge where you can't stop yourself. Okay, Shannon. Thank you for that, because I'm definitely going to make that video. I just didn't want to take up too much time talking about both topics, so I'm going to make a separate video for that um, tomorrow. So s stay tuned for that. I'll, I'll let you know. So I used to have the main problem for me with binge eating was I would do my day. I would do my best to eat as normally as possible, but there were for sure times in my life where I would restrict eating, Throughout the day, there were times in my life where I would eat normally, I would eat regularly, I would work to eat as nutritionally as possible. Hey Bethany, so good to see you! Um, but still, 
it was like clockwork. It was when I got home from work and I would be winding down. My routine would be pretty much come right home, take a shower, start making food or heat up the food I was going to have for dinner. And if I had not bought some snack food on my way home, that was a big thing for me. I would always stop at the store on my walk home from the subway to pick up chocolate or ice cream or some kind of cookies that I was just craving. I just would trick myself into this habit every single night, stopping at the store, picking up this stuff. I would tell myself, oh, I'm just gonna have a bite, I'm just gonna have a little bit. And it would turn into a binge where I would consume pretty much everything that I had bought in addition to my dinner, plus like whatever else I could eat at home um, until I was too exhausted and too full and I would just fall asleep. So how can we start to look into this habit and approach it from a perspective of stopping? Stopping doing this thing to ourselves that we don't feel good about ever. Like, it's not helping us, why do we do it? Well, to tell you the truth, it's a habit. It has become a habit. And the other side of it is, it's actually serving you in the moment. You're getting something from doing this habit, even though we would all call it a bad habit, doesn't make us feel good at all. It is something that is giving us some sort of reward. And that is a part of the reason why we have such a hard time breaking up with it. I'm going to give you four reasons why that are really common that we do this. Just want to preface this to start off with. You are not any of those awful things that you think about yourself because you do this. And if they're anything like the thoughts I used to think about myself, I'll just speak to that. I would go back and tell myself, Christine, you are not broken. You are not disgusting. You are not hopeless. You are not a fraud. You are not broken. None of that because you do this habit. All this is, is an urge a habit that you have now been acting on and it is just something that's ingrained just like any other habit in your life. We're going to unlearn this because there are people all over the world who have broken up with this habit and gone on to lead great lives with wonderful relationships with food where they don't let this habit interrupt their life, get in the way of them feeling their best. And so you can too. And that's what I'm telling you. So this is probably the scenario if you are somebody who overeats at night. Um, you get home from your day or it's after dinner. Um, you may not be hungry, you may be full from, from dinner, from your last meal of the day, but you feel driven to eat. You feel this drive to eat, this urge to eat and it's usually not like, oh, let me go have some more meatloaf or, or let me go have some more ground turkey. I'm just saying that because I just ate it. But it's like, ooh, I know there are Tate's chocolate chip cookies in the cabinet. I know they're there. I know they're there. I know they're there. Or there's a bar of chocolate. There's a Snickers bar in the cabinet. Or I know there's an open bag of chips. I know it's in there. And then once you start eating, it's hard to stop. Even when you finish that bag or you finish that box, you want to continue to eat. The drive to eat is continuous. So I'm gonna go over four things that could potentially cause this and then we're gonna talk a little bit about psychology. So first one, you're just plain and simple, you're not eating enough during the day. Diet mentality and restricting are some of the biggest um, kickstarters and enhancers to overeating and binge eating more than you think they are. There is a direct correlation from dieting and restricting, even if it's just 
um, your own mental restriction of what foods you think are good or bad or what you should or shouldn't eat to overeating and binge eating, plain and simple. So if you are somebody who maybe purposely restricts food during the day because you know you tend to binge or eat more at night, that would be for you. If you are somebody who isn't really that hungry during the day and so you don't really eat during the day, this would be more for you. If this is somebody who gets really lost in what they're doing during the day and distracted by work or taking care of their kids or whatever, and so you find you don't have time to eat or you forget to eat, I'm talking to you. I'm also talking to you if you ignore hunger. If your mindset has learned that hunger equals something bad and so you are trying to stave it off for as long as possible, I'm talking to you. Um, the result is that your body literally needs more fuel than you've given it. I talked to you about survival mode in another video. Your brain and body are in survival mode because they literally do not get enough food. And so the mindset is, I'm not getting enough food. At some point, it's going to switch where it, the primal desire to eat anything because your hunger levels have become so intense and the ravenous feeling may not look like stomach grumbling it may look like irritability it may look like fidget uh, anxiety it may look like insomnia this is when the willpower that you have worked and mustered and had throughout the day will not it just won't be able to withstand that force because it has nothing to do with willpower. The part of your brain that is driving this primal urge is not the part of your brain that gives you willpower. It's a different part of the brain and unfortunately, willpower decreases throughout the day and also the part of the brain that gives us willpower is actually decreased at the end of the night, at the end of the day. So this person is overly hungry, even though you don't realize it, and you have less impulse control, but you're setting yourself up for failure in this way. You're setting yourself up for this habit. Now, the thoughts and the feelings that occur before you overeat, I want you to take a look at, because you'll overeat to compensate for the deprivation. Sometimes you'll even rebel against yourself in this, um, in this way. So I want you to think about this on a serious note and ask yourself, on more days than not, do I restrict food throughout the day? And if the answer is yes, I want you to consider that. Could be something that may need to shift, will absolutely need to shift for you to unlearn this habit. Because first and foremost, if you're not nourishing yourself enough, you won't be able to out strength, out willpower, out strengthen this primal urge. It's evolutionary, got thousands of years on you, okay? Um, and then the other thing is, if you are thinking, I do eat enough during the day, I'm gonna question you, just because I'm here as your coach to push back. And um, if now it is something that you're consciously doing to eat more throughout the day to nourish yourself and to get out of survival mode, which I would say takes consciously about two solid weeks, to do at the very least um, that now it's the habit that you have when that certain time of day hits and then you just go into what you do the second thing is stress stressed after a hard day or a long day or just something that happened is happening in your life this is subjective um, you tell yourself you're stressed or tired after a long day or what you had to handle that day and you're ignoring your needs throughout the day. Maybe you are giving, giving, giving out, pouring out, pouring out all day and not taking care of your basic self-care needs and soul care needs. And so you're reacting to it. Your energy and your mental energy reserves are depleted. You've given so much, you need to recharge your batteries and you deal with that extra stress with food. This is so common, dealing with extra stress, with coping with food. Also, people do this with alcohol. Oh, I've just had a really long day. I'm gonna grab a glass of wine. Oh, today has been, I just need to take the edge off, glass of wine. Um, 
for me, it was less about the stress situation and more about this second part, this 2A, if you will. But I would use eating as my way to relax and just zone out after a after a day. Didn't matter how hard or easy it was. It was my way to relax. And I looked forward to sitting on my couch, putting on something on TV, and just having some snacks, some, some snacks. And it would just make me feel relaxed. It would make me feel comfy. It was cozy. It was yummy. The mouth feel was really good. I mean, who doesn't like chocolate and pretzels? Hello. Hey guys, if you're here, please say hi. Love hearing from you. Hey Darlene, hey Bethany. Um, so that was huge for me. And the pro a big problem connected with that was not only did I relax with food, but for some reason I had this like fear that I wouldn't be relaxing enough if I wasn't able to do it sitting on the couch and enjoying food. Like that was my definition of how to relax. So if I wasn't doing that, I didn't know what else to do. It didn't feel like anything else was going to suffice. That was that equaled relaxation to me, just totally putting my feet up, not thinking about anything and chilling. And if I said to myself, "Okay, I know this is not a great habit. I'm overeating and I'm binging and it's not helping me." But when I would go to think, "Okay, what can I do instead?" I would come up with nothing or I'd come up with fear. Like if I give this, you know, like what am, what's going to happen if I give that up? I don't want to give that up. So something to note, just like what comes up in your brain. But if you're this person, if you overeat to relieve stress, um, just exhaustion from the day, you want to just numb out or soothe yourself from what you, what that day has looked like. Um, just kind of disconnect from all those emotions, from all those responsibilities, from all the things you didn't get to do. And it feels like you're doing something or treating yourself, but you're actually, and this is key, so listen up to this, you think that you are treating yourself or satisfying that relaxation, but your action is not matching your need because you're not actually getting what your what your mind or yourself really needs and so that's why the food does never really never really feels satisfying never really feels satiating it's never enough because it's mismatched what you're doing is not what you actually need key number three i feel like i'm in hamilton right now number four your th <laughs> the songs play constantly in my mind um, number three, you're thinking you have too much to do and you're overwhelmed. I'll also add to this, you are not responsibly handling the mound of things that are piling up, or at least you perceive yourself to not be handling. The pile never gets smaller. It's always growing. You're never doing enough. Um, you are maybe not doing anything because you're procrastinating it. And so food is a way to soothe this feeling, escape from this, um, like it's, you know, in my experience, it was an irresponsibility. I felt so overwhelmed by all the things I committed myself to doing and I felt exhausted by the thought of it. And so my escape was to eat. That was an emotional eating connection for me in that case, in those scenarios where I just felt ashamed that I didn't do the work. I felt guilty. I felt like I'm never going to do this. It's never, I'm never going to actually be able to complete this project or to do that thing that I said I was going to do. And I instead would go and eat. So there was an emotional connection to that. Um, and I was being really mean to myself in my mind. This person wants to savor the time and relax and you start to link relating, um, you start to relate it to eating, whether you're hungry or not. And you may do this while like you're on the computer or watching TV, eating and entertaining yourself. And you get conditioned to think that eating is the way to relax. This is similar to what I was saying before. Um, and that you will get the most out of your time by having no obligations 
eating and temporarily zoning out and not thinking about all the things that you want to avoid doing or having to remember that you should be doing. Like I work all day and I take care of so much, this is my time, I need a break. That would be some of the thoughts of that mindset. And then the fourth one is you're bored and you don't know what to do. So it becomes a habit. Um, I also want to add to this, you're lonely. And I'm talking to myself when I say this. So if any of you all resonate with that, I'm saying it for us. You're bored or really you're lonely. I would come home and I would have this just void of loneliness inside of me. Like, I do all this work and I don't get to enjoy it. I don't get to have someone to enjoy it with. And I felt alone at night. And so part of the eating was because I wanted to feel comforted and have something fill or make me forget that void that I felt really lonely. And that was really hard for me to admit for a long time because when I felt my best, in the morning or during the day and I was doing my thing, I was like, you know, I'm good. I feel great. I'm living my life. I'm doing my things. I feel independent. I feel accomplished. And then I would come home at night and all of a sudden everything would change. I would suddenly fe feel this sense of loneliness and I didn't want to feel that. Didn't want to acknowledge it. And so I would eat to escape because that felt terrifying to feel. So mindlessly eating as something to do for to fill that boredom. Um, when you're feeling bored and not challenged or filled up. I think sometimes bo being bored is, like it's very rare that I'm bored anymore. Um, because I have so many things that I want to learn or do or experience or I have things that I want to create. And so once I started to develop that side of me, eating for boredom kind of went away. But the eating for loneliness definitely stuck around for a little bit. Um, so whatever, this is just four examples. There are other things that may connect you to overeating at night. But no matter what time of day you're overeating, the steps towards recovering from that and breaking up with that habit are pretty much all the same. So that would be identifying what your triggers are and what your patterns might be. What are you doing and thinking right before that binge that maybe you do and think every single night? Maybe it's the thought of I'm going home alone. Maybe it's the thought of I don't have anyone to hang out with or anything to do tonight. Maybe it's the thought of I am overwhelmed with the amount of stuff I did not do today or that the stuff I have to face tomorrow. What are you thinking and saying to yourself? A thought is going to create an emotion. The emotion is going to trigger a habit. Just because you feel it or think it does not mean it's true. And that is the definition of thoughts and feelings across the board. But it may feel very real. But it does not mean that it's true just because you think it and you feel it. So that's really key. So uh, bringing awareness to your thoughts. Oh my god. My cat just walked in the room. He scared me. Bringing awareness to your thoughts and what could be habitually triggering that from happening. Could be the time of day, it could be you pulling up into your driveway, it could be an emotion, right? What is the cause that starts the eating at night? Work backwards and break it down. What was I thinking? What happened? What was I feeling? What did I do? What did I not do? Who did I talk to? What could have triggered the thought, the emotion within you? And then see the connection between the feeling and the urge to do it with the action. Because between the urge and the action, there's actually a gap. It can feel 
minuscule and maybe even non-existent at first, but there is a gap between that urge and you taking the action. And that is where we are going to unwire the urge or unwire um, you taking action on the urge. We're doing other work to have the urges just completely relax and go away. And we can work on those triggers that are triggering the urge in that awareness. But there is also that space between the urge itself and you getting up off the couch or you walking into the kitchen or you unopen opening the bag or whatever and putting the bite of food into your mouth. Excuse me. So that is also what we want to examine because there's choice in that gap. And you can choose something different the next time you're in that situation. And actually, the practice and the work here is to realize that there is a gap there and that you have, um, you do not have to act on the urge just because you feel it. Just because you feel the urge and it's uncomfortability and it's all the things that it brings and all the emotions that it brings, it does not mean that you need to act on it. You can sit and experience and be with the urge, even at first, if it feels like it's gonna like tear you up, you're gonna implode into a million pieces. That is that survival mode, primal brain feeling that if I don't do this, I will die. It's the end of me. That's literally what it feels like. And if you've ever experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. So when you bring awareness into that, you now recognize this is what's happening. You start to take some breaths because we can't really think ourselves out of it, but we can do another type of um, sensory thing to bring us back and ground us, and breath work is incredible for that. So you can at least take a few moments between urge and go, between urge and eat. And even if at first you take a few moments and then you decide to eat later, that is still a win. Even if you take a few moments and it turns into 10 minutes, and then you go and decide to eat and you have a binge, that's still progress. Even if you take a few moments and you're able to ground and see the space between the urge and the action, and then you go and you start to eat and you realize, I really don't want this, that is progress. It's not just to binge or not to binge. It's not just a black or white thing. There's so much nuance of progress that I want you to recognize so you can celebrate it when it happens, warrior. The last thing I wanna say is give you just some questions that you can ask yourself when you feel triggered and you feel an urge coming on. What's happening right now? The facts. I just got home. My day, this is what I did. I have this much time to eat this is much time before I go to bed whatever the facts not even I've had a really stressful day because that actually is not a fact it is a subjective um, it's it's your it's your opinion of how your day was you could feel it I get it but it's not necessarily a fact the second thing is so the first one is what's happening right now give yourself the facts see it objectively second thing what do I really need go deep with yourself and be honest i really need a hug i really need a shower i really need a nap i'm just tired i really need to talk to my best friend because i've had this thing on my chest and i really need to talk to her about it i really need to just handle that pile of bills and figure out a way to like pay a part of it i really need to write that email I really need to get whatever's on my mind out of there. I'm gonna journal. What do you really need right now? Be honest with yourself. Okay, I'm back. And then the third, the last question is, what is my plan for meeting that thing which is not food? If you've identified it's not food is the thing that your body needs, your soul needs, your mind needs, what is my plan for meeting that thing? I'm gonna call my friend on my way home from work today. I am, I am going to write an email draft. Don't have to send it, but I'm gonna write the draft. I am gonna sign online and pay $5 of that bill. Awareness, practice, 
and patience. So tonight, if that is, if this is where you're at, I want you to keep this video. You can save it and watch it whenever you need to. I am here for you. You can even write to me. I am here to support you. So in any way that I can. Comment below with one thing, one takeaway from this video that you got that resonated with you. Please share. Love it when you do. Love seeing you guys write and express yourselves. And um, I'm going to end this video here. Hey guys, that just came. I am ending the video, but it's going to be available to rewatch on our Facebook group. So um, I'm going to end it right now, but it will be there in about a minute or two to rewatch. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Love ya. Bye.